because you begin the world structure that, that emerges naturally from learning, from, from scientific learning, from the religion of Islam. I would like to know your opinion, sir, about how this world structure that, that gradually forms in the mind of the Muslim negotiates uh, the coming of modernity and how it, it flattens its central and fundamental concept and how we can resist uh, such uh, encroachment. Actually, uh, structures emerge uh, not only naturally, but systematically also, because we have to consider uh, both of the processes. Uh, but um, one structure, remember, it is the second structure that emerges. So as a result, we have to think uh, why. Uh, it's primarily because of the education. And therefore, education is extremely important. Uh, in the mind of the Muslims, uh, the educational system especially the elementary education system. If you remember that table, the chart I tried to show you, uh, the whole ele elementary education must be uh, arranged according to the Islamic worldview. So that that world structure will emerge uh, properly. Otherwise, it will be, uh, you know, not proper in the Islamic sense. Of course, uh, it depends because you have to examine the person also. Usually what comes to my mind is, uh, Ibn Sina's autobiography. He tells his education, uh, how he started and what kind of education. As you know, uh, Ibn Sina was a great scientist at the same time. And when you look, he says he started with the Quran and he memorized the Quran and studied Hadith and studied Tafsir and studied Kalam and so on. And then gradually, mathematics, logic in higher and higher as he goes. So you should. Don't pay attention when he says, uh, I started with the Quran memorization. It's because he was 12 years old when he finished the memorization. The whole Quran, of course. He became a Hadith. Now, uh, why? Because Quran represents the Islamic worldview. That is why. So education is on, based on that. It's not just te teaching like a parrot-like parrot -like teaching. It's not just memorization, but giving the whole concepts. Explaining, of course, the teacher, they do that at the school education. So prob probably we can pay attention to this. Next question, please. You can even ask in Malay to Dr. Fairudin and he can translate it. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, for our, uh, because I'm from uh, 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 especially to Professor attention to the history of Islamic philosophy, usually uh, you will see something like this. We don't, uh, uh, Muslim philosophers don't approach uh, neither in epistemology nor in ontology, uh, you know, 
dividing them in, into uh, sections like uh, either monist or pluralist, uh, in, even in epistemology. There are, these are uh, mainly uh, issues uh, discussed in Western uh, philosophy. And after those discussions, you can see as the history of Western philosophy develops, they see the shortcomings and they try to unite both ideas. Uh, whereas in Islamic uh, philosophy, they were united all the, already from the beginning. So therefore, we can say Muslim philosophers are monist and pluralist at the same time. Because in monism, you find Wahdan, namely because of the notion of the Tawhid. So it refers to the unity. If there is unity in existence, it's because there is one creator which gives unity to that. But then, in creation, there is multiplicity at the same time, uh, because uh, in order to exhibit the uh, greatness, you know, the beauty uh, and uh, the richness, generosity, Jude, and all that, there is also multiplicity in, in this creation. Uh, th there is only one problem, of course, when we say this, doesn't mean that there are no problems in Islam. That there is the problem of the Wujud. If you may pay too much attention to that, you might think that certain philosoph philosophers are monists. But then you can see uh, the great effort on the part of those who defend the Wahdatul Wujud, that there is multiplicity. And we try to understand the nature of that multiplicity also. So therefore, Wahdatul Wujud does not really mean monism in the ontological sense. Uh, it means the unity of existence, not the uh, monist type of an existence. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, the question just now was about how, how do you integrate Islam and science? And I, I think all the blueprints have already been there. The, the only issue now is that what we need to do, as Professor Said has already said it in 1977, is to develop the murabbi. And this is actually the task of the university. Um, all these efforts right now to rewrite um, scientific books to include Islamic um, references to it, to me, is really not necessary. Because if you look at the history of Islam, the, the curriculum has always been the teacher, not the book. The book is not the curriculum. The teacher is the curriculum. In fact, in, in Islamic history, if you read the works of George Magdisi and others, it is always the teacher who tries to inter who, who will always be the one who ensure that knowledge is integrated. And this is what we have to produce right now. Not books that say, oh, uh, when it comes to the theory of gravity, Allah did something to the apple and the apple dropped on the floor. It sounds nonsensical. But it is the teacher that is supposed to explain to the student how these mechanisms actually work. We are lacking in that. I was talking to some brothers from Triple IT the other day. I was presenting for one of their workshops and they were showing to me these books that have been produced in Bangladesh. And they produce Islamic management, Islamic uh, sociology, Islamic psychology. Seriously, I mean, if that is what you call as integration of knowledge, then it is a big tragedy. That is not the intention of Sayyid Naki Balatas when he, he talks about the integration of knowledge, when he talks about the Islamization of knowledge. When he talks about the Islamization of knowledge, it starts with us. And that's why I want to go back to this ideal of coming up with a formula by which we can become like Andalusia. That was Islamic Spain in the past. The thinking of Sayyid Naki Balatas was about Islamic Spain, basically. That even when a non-Muslim enter into the University of Cordova, he could see how the wisdom of Islam is manifested. And it is not manifested in the architecture per se, although it is there, it is manifested in the people who are teaching of topics like science, physics, philosophy, and even mathematics. Take note, when the Islamic scholars came out with this whole simple number called Sifar, which is zero, it is linked back to the idea of Wahda. It is actually a monist way of thinking that everything leads to a certain unity and we need to do that. To integrate, we need to produce the teachers that can integrate this knowledge. Any other questions, please? Mr. Ghazali, would you like to comment? Well, uh, I have seen the government the latest uh, educational plan. We had a national seminar, right? One of the uh, discoveries is that because it was written by Mackenzie, unfortunately, 
anything about religion and God is gone. So we point out to the government that are you creating the book or are you creating the man? So they said they will acknowledge that uh, over, overlook, I mean oversight, a serious oversight technically today, yeah? letting both of the two brothers. But I think what is more importantly, as I mentioned to all of you, that the ra very radical perspective that we want to see today is that Muslims has a man, remember, you are not a creature of the state. We are told to be a creature of the state, the nation state, therefore you are a citizen. At the end of the day, you are going to the grave, and you have to answer your creator. So, if you want to change any civilizational trans transformation, is to be the man. You are accountable for everything. So today you have so many images. You are the father, you are the mother, you are the wife. And all of us have so many roles to play and we don't understand all the social roles created through what Allah has ordained in order to have a social life and to hold a society and community. But at the end of it, you are the man. Therefore, the, 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 the transformation what my two colleagues are talking about is a very, very 360 degrees change. And it takes a lot of what you call it, um, re, what you call redesigning the whole system. And you must have patience for that. If prophets took 43 years, we prepared day 100 years. Are you all willing to do that? Because that is what it's all about. Because for the Japanese, for those who want to know, why Japan? Because today we hear people talk about, well, we are in the middle income track. You know where this rubbish coming from. But, you know, actually we are in the middle income mine track. The mine is track. They didn't realize they are on track. But even if you want to understand the modern country, that overcome itself is circular transformation is Japanese. And they took from 1988 until today, and they are, they buttress their, what they call their destiny through the Moshibo spirit. It is a value based, Japanese based, but you'll be surprised the values are very much similar to Islam, ethical framework, trust, discipline. And remember, those who go to Japan, Shintoism, don't have idols, huh? <coughs> or go in and some way, they don't have idols, Japanese. It's just a shrine, and do to study all that. So my point to all of you is that what they are trying to do, whether you have this institution, the burden is every one of you. And to me, I say, inshallah, you are that generation. You must have that generation. Remember, revolutions are not state started by, man, by nation. They're not started by system. The Russian Revolution had 17 people. Prophet had four people and host. So you are the new generation that must carry this burden. This is what I'm saying because have we studied the whole Muslim world, Malaysia, for your information, and with Turkey today, we are struggling to be a modern community, a modern man, in the worldview of Islam. 50 years ago, people don't speak. I am a civil servant in the country. We did it. Mr. Prophet said, Nakib, I would be honored to tell you that I am responsible to bring Prophet Nakib in the system. That's a fact. But to understand the change he has to go, you have to become his people. You must remember to struggle is not for your money. You must struggle for God. That's your money you change. Nothing will change if you do not do for God's sake. Nothing I will tell you. It will be a life struggle. Then Allah will watch every moment of your energy. Because He will bring the angels. Because have you do not believe in the angels today, we believe only in the Iman. We think angels are not watching you today. If not, this will not stand. The scientific understanding of Allah brings out the universe. It is the angels, the millions and billions of angels doing that business is not science magic understanding. Therefore, you must be generation to commit. For the next hundred years, you shall not go for the car, but you shall go for Allah only. Then you can change the faith, inshallah. Because that's how four times Islam rise in all four. In Cordoba, in Ottoman, in Spain, Damascus, in India and now it's happening in this part and you must remember my dear brothers we are the Nusantara 
we have 250 million people and we are quite a state to be challenged and they know where Islam is rising and it's because of this my dear brothers whether in Indonesia whether in Thailand whether in Philippines you are the new generation where the government and the leaders speak Islam as a public policy the rest of the world it is there and therefore you are that generation inshallah I pray to God that this is the beginning but you must take this destiny yourself not Professor One not Khairuddin not we together as human beings must believe that you want to do this job don't seek glory on his birth but remember Allah started people the greatness of all Muslims they were great rich people Abu Bakr remember when he talk about the ISO of Islam I also Islam is in Sayyidina Usman. He gave everything. Umar gave half. Ali Usman, all rich people. You must aspire to be rich for Allah's sake. Cannot be poor because Muslims are poor like Bilal because they have the spirit and they are very rich in their heart. The money may be weak, but they command life. And therefore, I pray to all of you remember every one of you don't come here. And you do not know each other, you are not going to help yourself. You are that community. You are that community whom Allah makes you today. We do not care for those who don't come because they are insignificant many. You are the senior country, your generation. We will do this little what we can, therefore, we must struggle. But if Allah wants to change, it is Him, but He watches. Are we sincere with our Iman and our declaration of the Akhidah Islam? That's my bidding to all of you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Ghazali. Um, I've been given extra time, uh, so I will ask uh, Professor Basala to say a few uh, concluding remarks, and then after that, uh, Dr. Fahbuddin, Dr. Ghazali has said it very nicely, and then later we will ask Professor Wan to say something. Please, uh, Professor Basala. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Many things uh, can be said, uh, actually, uh, but uh, maybe uh, one more thing that I would like to add uh, in education, what is important uh, in the past, uh, in uh, Muslim philosophers, in epistemology, they emphasized something. They said that uh, when we, uh, our mind uh, captures uh, the reality of something, uh, it becomes identical with it. Identical with it. I am sure you have listened to this. Uh, as far as I remember, Professor Atta, in the first uh, Saturday night seminar, he was talking about this. But you, you see, what we should do, we should take this in relation to education. In relation to education. So, uh, when you learn something, uh, you become uh, identical with it means uh, you emulate uh, that thing and you become uh, as if it is you, uh, you're part of your life. So uh, why? Because uh, in the past, uh, great Muslim philosophers, they always expressed uh, one idea concerning knowledge, uh, that uh, knowledge is excellence but uh, besides that, it is virtue in itself and by itself. Uh, because they said, Khairun Mahdun, pure goodness, pure goodness. Uh, so therefore, if, that, if you uh, become identical with it, that means you become virtuous. And that is more important for us. Uh, because this uh, also specifies a purpose for education. Uh, I did not mention this in my talk, uh, the purpose of education, therefore, to educate man to be a complete man. And uh, one aspect of completeness is the virtue that comes together with it. And in fact, uh, adab cannot be taught theoretically. Theoretically. Uh, as a result, you try to practice uh, adab. Uh, the professor, the way he acts, uh, you know, in, in classroom, outside the classroom, in all of his actions and so on, 
he becomes uh, a representative of that uh, uh, that uh, complete man, and the student by seeing that they live together, uh, all of these things, and of course this has theory behind it also. I usually make a parallel between this and another uh, verse that is uh, very many many times repeated in the Quran uh, because. Uh, theory and practice, they go together, hand in hand. Uh, if we uh, quote just the phrase uh, from those verses, آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا salihat. So the first one, of course we don't say آمَنُوا uh, is theory, but uh, it is not something that you can see. It is something abstract that you uh, hum, somehow you develop in your mind, but then when you put it into action, it becomes amal salih. Right? So perhaps we should uh, also emphasize this one, that in, in theory, uh, practice must follow right after that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really have nothing else much to say. I just uh, want the students here to make this commitment to write very good theses because the best universities that you see all over the world are the universities that produce the best of physicists. And this should be our commitment. And I feel that Chassis UTM is the right place for it. Um, I want all of you here, especially the students, to give your life commitment to this cause of intellectual jihad, I call it. I cannot say it in Singapore because it will start another petition <laughs> against uh, Dr. Harry. But it is, it is, it is a, a striving for us. And take note that what we are trying to do is actually to fulfill a fardu kifaya in society. So even when you find topics for your thesis, find topics that would be cutting edge topics that has not been taught, uh, been been thought about by scholars in a way that you could, and that requires a lot of rigor, right? Or people always ask me why I have too many white hair. I pity my wife having to cope with this white hair. But that is the price. I mean, of course, don't ask Prof. One this question. Um, but that is the price <laughs> of us being committed to this cause. And, and I would like to call upon all of you to be with us in this journey, inshallah. Salam alaikum. I have prepared that to me. I I said uh, uh, with a fellow citizen, no, the positive. But you think this message has a matter of realism as well. And I read this nature to you. Our nation, being cosmopolitan, is not a, a historical chance, no coincidence. But to the message of history and time, Our children have their destiny written to move on together. Again, with such push of modernities, as again history and the nature of land all inherited, constitutionalism came to settle the nation state idea. After our four masters left the orphans to fend their own life. So, we are today, in this salad bowl of history, religion, culture, economic, politics, science, that face tough time to melt down, as so many aspects do. But the founding fathers were wise men too. They agreed to go for fundamental trust that will, that will acknowledge the freedom that we have in this Malaysia, which is religion, education, culture, and property, and respect what can and what cannot be met down. That's the reason, as what Professor Sainakib said, it was only the language that was common to us all. We never desire people to change the culture, we never desire to change the religion, not to take the property in the last 56 years, never. I strongly believe 
that we have so much positive strategic assets to hold and bring all together as a distinct modern model of modern cosmopolis. If we want to learn much more to be good human rather than being a mere citizen, being subverted to be just a customer and the dominant four Gs, which I mentioned great, great, great in our contemporary times. Third, our nation has a fair share of misfit. The corrupt, the ugly across the society, they get more attention than needed. While our nation still lacks the great bond of spirit together to be great. Maybe we like to admire Japan. According to the Yoshi the great Japanese grew by the samurais with the Moshibo spirit. As what he said today, we will have a jihad under Islam. Intellectual jihad, as you ask scholars. But Islam is not intellectualism. They are the composite human being. Today we face so many and new checkmates. What well, I mean checkmates, the way of modernities. Some in use locally, while others imported via friendly forces, even among our friends. Till the point we had over 50 years of continuous governance and peace plus stability to move over the rugged terrain, common, rough seas and dark skies, success, failures, is experimentation. So after becoming adulthood, based on other paramount model of governance, our test will Malaysia move overhead with the new generations of four C's that we are confident of your will life. You are competent in it. You care for your nation and mankind and you shall be concerned whether you be, have a sense of justice, a sense of fairness, and love to fellow mankind as we have contract contract of the mastery stroke by the white select of a worldview. We too is our turn to have a worldview for the world of our generation. So our common prayer of which is how Malaysia will remain, step first to its future destiny, shared by all again into the 22nd century. Remember, my dear friends, in a recent report that was launched by Pricewater Copper House, Malaysia has a potential to be a great nation in 2050. You were appointed to join the nations of developed state. We should pray together that we must have faith even at that stage of greatness, we have Islam as our worldview to get all mankind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for the camera. Um, we have a bit of a time. I'm not going to, to tarry, but uh, just to convey something. Um, on Thursday, I was visiting Professor Alatat. And uh, we were talking and he was reminiscing of how things have been going on and you can see uh, the sadness of the Tagazali and that part was also there when we were discussing the travails of and, and the hardship that we have gone through uh, to this part, uh, to this particular day. And this particular day, you know, the third uh, celebration anniversary of Cassis is not possible without the man that is sitting with us. Uh, I personally owe a lot to uh, Professor Wan. But one funny thing that Dr. Alastas was saying is that, yeah, it was due to Professor Wan and uh, many others who helped, among them uh, Dr. Zagi, who helped this thing come to this part. And a lot of students have benefited, students of, uh, of his staff previously. And one joke that he has, I said, Professor, Professor Alastas, I understand Professor Wan has gone through a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look at his hair, he's losing it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, truly, uh, as, a, as a person who has been closely under the di direction of Professor Wan since I was an undergraduate, really, it is an honor to, to, to listen to him again. Can you please address your Professor Wan? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First, I want to thank uh, KFC Society for putting all sorts of efforts and cooperation and education to all these uh, day's uh, activities, starting with seminars and this forum. And it's also tonight also to continue organizing from the Kira Gasset Satellite Factor. I want to thank also uh, my dear friends, uh, Dr. Ghazali. 
Professor Madia, Dr. Ayurveda Anjunai, and then uh, our very, very dear friend, Professor Patanati Ganj. All of them may speak slightly in different tones, but they share similar passion and love for the worldview of Islam, and they exemplify it in their career, in their life. That I know for, for a fact. Dr. Ghazali, uh, from the very beginning, when Prof. Nakalantas was still beginning at his time, he brought him into speaking to the high level of government officers. That's what he meant when he brought Nakalantas into the mainstream. Prof. Uh, Pasalan came to his tech after dropping his wife at hospital for, his, for the birth of his only, his only child. And then he gave his dear wife there, Mrs. Fatima Allah. Muslim world has this great negative tendency of always inventing the will. In 1977, you know very well that 313 great scholars of the Muslim world gathered at Mecca and had the first world conference of Islamic education. And there are people like Nasser, like Al-Taf, like Nadawi, like Pat Nasir before the, who died, of course. They decided that, that to solve the problem of the Muslim world, we need to reform education. And that reform of education must start with the university. But 40 years now, the very conception of how to develop the university and the ideas that are led to this have been forgotten already. And Professor Atas pursued that when he was entrusted the Bird Isaac. And after 12 years, it was left to utter ruin. But not the ideas, not the people that he produced not the excitement that he has uh, embedded in all of us who came to study with him, who came to work for him, and who shared the ideas that he was trying to impose there, he was trying to instill there. Cassis is only three years, but not the idea, not the passion, not the commitment for, for knowledge, for this worldview, and not even to rebuild Andalusia, although, also, although we understand what the Dr. Sakhari is talking about. But to rebuild what is, a, is, is great about this worldview that we have, that is inclusive yet also exclusive. We should not lose, lo, lose any hope. The challenges which Dr. Ghazali was talking about are indeed true. It comes from within and from without. But with the clarity of conception which uh, Prophet Salam was trying to share with you in a short time just now, is what we need also. But we are not starting from scratch. We Many of the things that the Saudi have been advising you, you are already part of that. But we must continue to struggle because we are not operating in a vacuum. We are operating in an environment which is pushed by this neoliberal economic capitalism. How to measure our excellence, how to measure our performance. But we have to fight that intelligently and rationally. It doesn't matter how society is going to evaluate you, but you must be sure of who you are and you must develop this, this, this intellectual cosmopolitanism which, which Dr. Khairan is talking about. I, I just want to digress a little bit from what he was talking. He was saying, he was urging you to produce the best thesis possible. Some of you will write great thesis, I'm sure. But all of you, I hope, will be good men and women who may write great thesis but you will do whatever you do to act to 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 to, ethic, to, 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 to bring forth the Islamic ethical spiritual dynamism that we are all about. Because not all of you will become great scholars, but we want all of you to become great men and women in whatever field you do, as a wife, as a mother, as a as a politician, as a businessman. Because that is what we are talking about here. Of course. If you write a bad thesis, you are not going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> but this writing is the minimum that we expect from you. We want you to be quality human beings that will, inshallah, carry this organization forward moderately, intelligently, and full of personal commitment. That's why I understand fully well why Dr. Ghazali was sobbing just now, because he was part of that. He saw how this great institution that we had before was developed because it was part of the uh, World of Trustees. And he, he, he contributed not only with energy and his resources, but also with his friends' resources. He went out begging for money also to help some of our students. And Prof. Pasala continued to come here to share his, his ideas and knowledge with us, despite of many of his other responsibilities. 
And Dr. Said Khaluddin, despite his recent hiccups, <laughs> which, which make him a sudden celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> so, inshallah, I'm not going to spend our, spend our time, but, but be positive and be optimistic. Whatever the problems are, we are already part of the solution. But we will be patient, we will work very hard, and trust in God. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.